Up next, we have Alex. Alex is going to be talking about ECS Fluent Bit, I believe. Yep. I Good will. luck. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, so Alex um, Bortek from Mixia here. Um, the challenge I faced recently was around shipping um, um, ZIG logs from low power sensors into Elastic Cloud uh, with appliance and transformation uh, in between. And the goal was to have as, as little compute as possible while doing that transformation. So the first initial approach was let's ship the logs uh, after each log rotate into uh, S3 bucket. And once those are in, in the cloud, um, I would run a, on a schedule an EC2 instance with Logstash. Uh, it would batch process those uh, files out of S3 into Elastic and be done with it. So obviously that approach has certain drawbacks. Um, one of them would be um, a delay on how, how soon the data arrives into Elastic. Uh, so if I would run Logstash more frequently, essentially I would end up running it permanently, uh, which accumulates in terms of the cost of the solution. So I was looking for an alternative to that. Um, so for future, uh, having some, some sort of ser serverless pipeline in the cloud looks very promising, um, but I haven't investigated much into that um, area uh, yet. And what I came up currently um, is finding a lightweight streaming from the sensors itself while applying transformation on the sensors um, directly to the uh, elastic in the cloud. So th there were a couple of options what I could use uh, to handle the log files. Uh, one of them is bits. Um, there are pros of that. It's lightweight. It has um, ready-to-use Zeek module. Uh, it's easy to manage. Unfortunately, there isn't much customizations available. Um, uh, to handle the log files, you cannot do any enrichments, and these are all the logs it can actually handle currently. So it's just what six of them. For example, I need a DHCP log; it's not available. As a comparison, um, it wasn't an option at all for me to run Logstash, uh, but you can see it's super heavyweight. I cannot run it on a low power sensor. It's complex to manage, uh, and frankly. Uh, looking for a particular template to use in terms of like how I would transform the data. It, there's so many choices, it can be easily lost. What I decided to do is just create from scratch uh, a set of filters and parsers using FluentBit. So the FluentBit has a very, you know, few advantages here. Uh, it's very lightweight as, as, as well as bits, but it's very customizable and easy to manage. Um, and so that's how I came up with this uh, uh, repository I'm sharing currently. Uh, that is essentially a set of parsers and filters uh, for FluentBeak uh, that you can apply to Zeek log files, and they do give you output in Elastic Common Schema format. Um, so a few details on that. Um, FluentBeak can tail log files and apply parsers, essentially, based on the log file name that you're tailing. Um, those parsers, they can easily be customized for whatever amount of fields you have in the in the log file, they work for tab delimited files. Um, if you configure Zeek to output in JSON format, then you don't need any parser. You can just ingest that JSON directly into FluentBit. And now a few words about uh, Elastic Common Schema. At the first glance, that's kind of straightforward. It's just a different way you name fields, but that's uh, kind of misleading because the dots in the ECS notation, they actually represent nested structure of JSON. And in reality, it should look like this. So you, for the client and for the server, you would group the IP and the port under the you know, appropriate object. And that's how you need to uh, push data into, into Elastic. So um, FluentBeat has a nest uh, uh, operation on the data. So this is how you essentially apply it. You would do some wildcard matching and then nesting and removing prefixes. It works just beautifully. Um, there is more uh, complicated situation when you need to parse vectors, like for example, multiple IP addresses that you can find in DNS responses, in DNS log file. Uh, so let's take a look how BEATS uh, approaches that. So what they do, they actually split the IP addresses into separate strings, but they keep them as one big array of IP addresses, and then TTLs is another array. And this is not how it has to be done for ECS. For ECS, you actually have to group an IP address and TTL and some other parameters for the response into individual 
objects, and then that's an array of objects you need to push into, uh, into Elastic. Um, so to do that with FluentBit, uh, it has actually capability to run scripting engine, Lua scripting engine, on the, uh, on the input, and that's what I'm currently working on to finish my DNS parser, and after that it would be you know, pretty much complete set of uh, output. Thank you very much.